guys, welcome to the last episode of Gentech for the season. I'm super excited about this episode. Um, we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite tools, which is Omeka. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have heard of Omeka or not, but it's basically a content management system that allows you to create um, digital archives and digital collections and exhibits and all kinds of stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get started. So in this presentation, I'll be talking about Omeka, why you'd want to use it, and I'll show you a demo of some of the basic features in Omeka. So as I said, Omeka is a tool that you use to create digital collections and exhibits. I've seen a few community um, archives use this tool to display some of their collections. Um, and this tool has features for not only creating those collections and exhibits, but also really focusing in on the metadata around those items. And so for those of you who may not know what metadata is, metadata is basically data about data. So it's data that describes a particular item. So this is typically used in the information science, library science, archival sciences world. Um, and it's really helpful for conveying information about like the format of the item, the condition of the item, who created the item, all of that information and putting that into a greater context uh, for why that item exists. Omeka, like WordPress, has several plugins available which extend the features of Omeka. Some of those plugins include Neatline, which is an interactive timeline or mapping tool, a Scripto, which allows you to crowdsource transcriptions. And Omeka also has themes that you can use for basic website design. So you don't have to know how to code directly out of the box, um, but coding will help you if you want to customize your website and truly make it look uh, the way that you want it to look. This tool was created by the Roy Rosenwig Center for History and New Media at George Mason University. So here are a few examples of some websites and some institutions that have used Omeka to create their digital collections. I'll be showing you guys in a little bit more detail the, the Marion Cheek Jackson Center Community Archive, but definitely feel free to check out the rest of these um, and see if Omeka might be a tool that you might want to use for your own family history research. So there are a few different versions of Omeka. Omeka.org is the free open source version. Um, and this is the version that you would use if you already had a web hosting and a domain name. So it's very much like WordPress.org in that way. Omeka Classic is for an individual website. Uh, Omeka S is for institutions managing multiple Omeka websites. And Omeka.net, which is what I'm going to show you guys today, is Omeka's hosting service. So you can think of it as WordPress.com, where everything is already self-hosted for you. Um, but as a result, you get limited customization, limited themes, and limited plugins. Now, the version I'm going to be showing you guys today of Omeka.net is the free trial version. Um, but there are a multitude of other plans available that you have to pay on an annual basis to get additional features and additional storage. So why would you want to use Omeka? Well, I think it's a really great tool for potentially showcasing um, some of your family records or your family photo albums. You can also use this for community archiving purposes as well. And as far as the features are concerned, um, some of the pros include that the structure is focused around the digital objects and around the metadata uh, surrounding those objects. So it's easier to create exhibitions from those items and focus those items around a central theme. And if you want to utilize a rigid metadata structure, for example, like the Dublin Core, um, which you may know about if you are an archivist, which I'm not, um, you may want to use Omeka for that purpose as well. So some of the cons of Omeka is that um, Omeka does tend to have limited customization. They do have 11 themes as well as over 75 different plugins that you can use to extend those features. So that can help out a lot. But if you truly want to make your Omeka digital archive 
customized to your needs, uh, you will have to do some coding. So just a heads up on that. Um, they also have a smaller, more niche community. So it may be a little bit more difficult to, to get some help with any issues that you may be having with Omeka. Um, I do think over the past few years, um, Omeka has become even more popular. So there's probably more resources out there available, but Omeka certainly isn't as popular as something like Drupal or, or WordPress. So why would you want to use Omeka? So Omeka can help you share a variety of materials. Um, like I said, it's great for metadata structured projects. Um, and because it is metadata structured, it makes it easier for users to find items on your website because you're listing all of this different information about those items. Omeka is also a really great choice for community archives because you can list out all of the items that are available in your archive. Um, you can put them in collections and then you can create greater uh, exhibitions to, to showcase those items around a theme. Omeka may also be a more um, cost-effective choice for community archives too. All right, so let me show you guys how you use Omeka. Okay, but before I get into the basic features of Omeka, I just wanna show you guys the Marion Cheek Jackson Center Oral History Trust. This is their Omeka website for a lot of the content that they have in their community archive. Now the Marion Cheek Jackson Center is a community archive that is based in Chapel Hill and they focus on the history of the historically black North Side community. So you get uh, your navigation here and gives you an about page letting you know about the Oral History Trust and what you can expect to find on their website as well as rights and, permi and permissions. And they have um, their items set up in different categories. So if you click on items, you get just the overall items page where you have um, over 900 different items, but you have the individual's name. So this is an interview and it looks like they've incorporated audio here. They also have incorporated tags. So this makes it easier for users to find particular items. So I'm assuming in this interview, some of these topics were mentioned. And so if a user were to search in the search box for one of those topics, then they would come across this interview. Now you can also have items that incorporate images as well. Let me go ahead and show you guys what one of these audio items look like. So here they've listed what the item is. They've given a brief summary of the individual who's being interviewed. There's some additional details. So this is really where you get into the metadata with the Dublin Core um, metadata element uh, set standards. So you get your title, your description, your subject, type, creator, publisher, all of these different um, pieces of information about this particular item. At the bottom here, you do get some related content. And then at the top, you have um, your transcripts that you can view, as well as the tape log. So. These, I think, are just downloads to PDF files, but users can definitely play the audio just directly on that page. All right, I'm Beryl Borte. And I'm Caroline Englert. And we are here today with Ms. Rita Andrews. Today is Wednesday, October 10th, 2018, now they also have um, their items split up into oral histories as well as images. And so if I click on oral histories, it's just gonna show me a listing of all of those interviews that they've done with various people. And then images gives me a listing of all of the images um, that are in their collection. So if I were to click on one of those, it gives me the image, a description, and then again, you get that metadata information. And it also, Omeka does also create citations for you. So it basically takes the information that you um, create about the particular item and creates that citation at the bottom of the page. So if someone uses it, they can very quickly just copy and paste that. As far as collections, 
here's how their collections are set up. So they're just around um, different topics. So if I click on Civil Rights in Chapel Hill, this is a collection of the photographs of Jim Wallace. And it gives me a very um, detailed summary of what this collection is about. And then it provides the items in that collection. So these are all of the images um, from Mr. Jim Wallace. And then of course, if I were to click on one of those images, it would bring me to that items page, where again, you get the title, the image, summary, and metadata information. You can also have exhibits in Omeka. And exhibits are typically based around like a kind of a theme. So here they have two of those. One of them is called Facing Our Neighbors. And the other one is called The Struggle Continues. So I'll click on this one. And here they're basically able to build a story based on the items in their collections. So here they have various sections of their exhibit. If I click on this first one, here they have some summary information and they have some photos to further illustrate. And users can progress through the exhibit by going to the other sections. And then of course, if they were to click on one of these photos, it brings it to that item page. And so that's basically how an Omeka um, digital archive works. You have your items, which are just individual items. They can be pretty much any kind of media, um, images, audio, video, etc. Those items are organized into collections. And then you can pull from those items and those collections to create exhibits, which have a greater overarching theme. So we're going to go ahead and close out of that. And to learn more about Omeka, you want to go to omeka.org. Here you have the differences between Omeka S, Omeka Classic. Again, Omeka S is more for an institutional level, um, and Omeka Classic is more for individual projects. So Omeka Classic is what you would want to use if you already have website hosting and a domain name. You would just download this to your website server um, and configure it from there. They also have other Omeka projects. Omeka.net is the self-hosting option. So this is the equivalent of WordPress.com. And then I don't know too much about Omeka everywhere, but I think it allows you to do additional things on mobile devices with Omeka. Now they do have a blog that they keep um, updated frequently. So you can always go to the blog to see what new features that they're gonna be working on as well as um, any up and coming events or things like that. So I'm gonna to go to omeka.net and this is what I'm going to be using today for you guys. So they basically show you what you can do with Omeka.net, creating exhibits, publishing, creating collections, all that stuff. Um, if you click learn which plan is right for you, it shows you the plans that are available. And so you can choose um, whatever plan applies to you. But if you do create an account with Omeka.net, they do provide you with an option to create a trial account. I would highly suggest doing that first if you're interested in learning how to use Omeka um, and you don't want to spend the time trying to get hosting and configuring and all of that. Um, that'll give you a sense of whether or not you might want to use this tool. So that's what I'm using in this uh, demo right now. Now they also have a showcase. And in the showcase, they just show you a bunch of other websites that have also utilized Omeka for their projects. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go to my account. So as it says, I'm only using the trial plan. Um, with the trial plan, you can only create one website and you have a limitation of 500 megabytes of storage space. So I just created a very quick website here, gentech.omeka.net. And if I click on it, this is what it looks like so far. So <laughs> very basic 
Um, I don't have any items set up just yet. I just have navigation for browsing items and browsing collections. I already have the search bar here and it's already given me one of their default themes. So if I go back and go to manage site, this is what the dashboard looks like. So I get um, a quick summary of what my website looks like. I have no items, no collections, no tags, no plugins, and I'm using this Berlin theme. Now, if I wanna change this theme, I can click on the name here. And since I'm using the trial plan, I only have two themes available. So either this Berlin one or the seasons one. So I'm gonna choose the seasons one. It's a little bit more colorful, so and I'll do configure. And when I do configure, I can change a couple of different options here. So as you can see, I can choose a style sheet. So I guess since it's called seasons, they have styles for each of the different seasons, spring, summer, autumn, winter, night. Um, you can also include a logo, add some text at the bottom of your website, display copyright, so um, if you set this up, definitely check out these options and see if there's anything that you wanna change about them. I can go to navigation here. And this basically allows me to add things to my navigation bar. So, so I can actually add a home link by typing home. And then the URL, I'll just put a slash, which just means the home page. And I'll check this and drag it to the top so it displays. Do save. And then if I go to my archive, I'm just going to refresh the page. So it's already changed the theme for me and now I have this home button. So when I click on it, it just goes directly to this page. I can also change additional settings here. And so this will allow me to set things such as how many results per page uh, the users can see um, in the interface of the website. Now we have additional um, things that we can change at the top here. So plugins, appearance, users, and settings. Plugins, again, this is where you're gonna be able to extend those features. Um, since I'm using Omeka.net, I only have nine plugins available, but like I said, there's I think there's over 75 plugins. So these, this is just a sample of what you have available for you. Um, if you want to create just regular old pages, you do have to include the simple pages plugin. And if you want to create exhibits, you have to have this exhibit builder plugin. So I'm going to go ahead and install both of those. Okay, so now it shows me it's available. And then the exhibit builder. And then this is just settings for the exhibit builder plugin. Um, so the default method by which you wish to sort the listing of exhibits. I'm just going to say alphabetical. That's fine. Do save. And if I want to go back and change the theme, I can always go to appearance and change the theme from here. So with users, this is where you would add anyone who is helping you manage the digital archive. In settings, these are just additional settings that you would set up for your website. So you could add or change your website's title here, add a description, copyright information, um, author information, that kind of stuff is listed here. Now I'm going to go back to the dashboard. And so now it says that I have two plugins because I installed the exhibit builder as well as the simple pages one. So in order to add an item, you want to go to items, add an item. And then here is the Dublin core. So this is where you start entering in the metadata information. Um, depending on how important this is to you, you can fill out as much or as little as you want. Um, I think for more archive-based 
institutions, um, more data, more metadata is going to be um, more important. So you'll probably have to fill out more fields. But again, it just depends on your project. And um, but again, it just depends on your project. So here I'm going to add one photo and I'll name this hunting group. And then as far as the other fields, I'm just going to, I'll put a topic of hunting and a description of Then I can go to item type metadata. If I go down to this drop down, basically what this allows me to do is say what type of item this is. And so for me, this is a still image. And then depending on the type of item it is, you may have to put in uh, more metadata information. Again, how much you want to put in depends on your needs for your project. If I click on files, I can go ahead and upload my file here. Okay, and I could add multiple files to an item if it's relevant, but for this one, it's not. I can also include tags. So if there are specific people in this image, um, maybe I would want to list out their names. So I'll put in one name here, and then I'm just gonna put in dog because there's a dog in this image and click tags, add tags. And so it's added those tags here. and so. If users search on those tags, they would be able to find this image pretty quickly. Now, I'm just going to add item for now. And it has it available here, so you get to see information about what type it is, when it was added. Um, if I need to add additional information, I can always go back to edit. And I can change that information here. So if I wanted to add in more metadata, I could do that. I'm going to do view public page just to see what it looks like. So I have my image as well as my tags and my citation. And then the metadata is at the bottom with the description. So I'll close that out. I can also choose to add it to a collection, but I don't have any set up just yet. So um, let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, go to collections over here on the left and do add a collection. And then here you have metadata about the collection. So um, I'm just gonna give it a title. And then you can fill out these additional fields as well if you'd like. Now you can choose whether you want this collection to be featured or public. Let's just do add collection and see what happens. In order to add items to this collection, I can go to items, go back to that particular item, and then assign it to that collection. So I'll do save changes. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to the website and just see what it looks like. So right now I don't have anything featured because I didn't check off that box yet, but I do have my one recently added item, which is that image. If I go to browse collections, it'll show me that one collection that I have. So the Franklin, North Carolina one with the description, as well as its metadata and the items in that collection. So if I had multiple items, they would be listed down here. So if I click on that item, It'll show you the same page that we saw previously, but it includes the collection that it is a part of. Now, if I go back to the image and do edit, 
I can check public so that people who visit the website can see it and I can check featured. And what this will do is when I go to the home page, it will show that item as a featured item. So if there are certain items that you want to feature, you can, you can check that off. Um, you can do the same thing with collection. You just go to collections, edit, make sure it's public and then do featured, save. And then if you refresh the screen, it'll show that as a featured collection. Now, what if you want to add an exhibit? Well, in order to do that, you just go to exhibits. Again, exhibitions are going to be more of like an overarching theme um, for whatever items or items from collections that you're displaying. So let me go ahead and create one here. So to do that, you just go to add an exhibit. And here you get some metadata fields. So you can put in the title, you can put in the description, um, any credits, any tags. Um, you can also choose if you want to use a different theme for each of your exhibits, you can do that. Um, and you can choose like a cover image for um, the exhibit. So I'm just going to make a pretty basic one real quick. And then for the slug, um, I'm just going to type lag experience Appalachia. And then the description would just be a summary of what you may find in this exhibit. And then tags could be any number of keywords that you might expect a user on your website to use to get to this exhibit. So here I'll just name a couple of states. Maybe mountains, all kinds of things. I'm just going to use the current theme. And then this says start the exhibit on the summary page, so that's fine. And then you can choose a file to represent the exhibit if you want. You can also create additional pages, but for now, I'm just going to say it's public, make it featured. Of course, you don't have to make this featured if you don't want to. And then I'll just do save changes. Okay. Now let's go ahead and see what it looks like. So if I go back to the home page, I can refresh the screen and you see it now appears under featured exhibit here. So if I click on the exhibit, it doesn't have any items in it, it just has the description. So in order to add items to the exhibit, you wanna go back to the exhibit page and click add page. And here you can create different pages for each of the exhibits. So um, let's say, for example, I want this one to be more about Franklin, North Carolina. So this is the page title. You can also create a title for the menu link. So, you know, like when we went to the Mary Antique Jackson Center Oral History Trust, um, exhibit, they had their links on the right hand side of the page to navigate through the exhibit. So I'm just gonna call this one Franklin NC. For the page slug, I'm just gonna call it Franklin NC. And then you can choose whatever kind of layout you want. So whether you want it to be a gallery or um, text or a file with text. I'm gonna do file with text. And then I'm just gonna do save changes. Okay.
Now if I go to view public page, see what that looks like. Okay, so it looks like that. So this is essentially what my exhibit looks like so far. So I have my description and then I have my menu link over here. Now I'm gonna go back to this page. And go to file with text again and do add new content block. And so what this does is it allows me to start adding my content. So I can go ahead and choose an item by clicking on this and it'll show me all of the items that I've uploaded to my Omeka site. So I've only uploaded this one, so I'll just click on this one and select item. And then I can provide a caption if I want to. So I'll just provide a quick caption. And then I could add additional ones if I want, but I only have one, so I'll just leave it for now. And then here you would put text relating to um, this page. So this is related to Franklin, North Carolina. So here I would put text about what items I can expect to see uh, as it relates to Franklin, North Carolina. So I'm just gonna put some fake text real quick. And if I want to add additional blocks, like maybe I want a gallery at the bottom of the page, to do that, I would just click on that layout and then click add a new content block. So you can continue adding content blocks to your pages um, until you get to the point where the content looks the way that you want. So I'll do save changes. And let's take a look and see what it looks like. So this is my exhibit page. Again, I can click Franklin NC. And this is just the home page of Franklin NC. So I have my image with my caption and then my fake text here. If I were to add, like I said, that gallery, I would click gallery, add new content block. And then here I would be able to add additional items. Now you can also change the settings of the specific blocks that you create. So this first one was the file with text one that I made. The second one is the gallery one I just created. I'm gonna close this gallery one. And so now we're just looking at the file with text. So if I go to layout options at the bottom for the file with text, I can open it. And then I can choose a couple of different things. So if I wanna change where the file is positioned, because currently it's over here on the left, I can choose for it to be on the right. I can change the file size. I can also change the position of the caption. So I just changed it to the right for that image. So I'll do save changes and refresh. And now it's over here on the right hand side of the screen. Now in order to add additional items to this exhibit, um, what you wanna do is just do save and add another page or you can go back to your exhibit and then go down and just do add page. And then if you ever need to reorder these pages, you can simply just click and drag to move them around. And if you wanna delete any of them, you can click on this X here. And so those are exhibit pages. So the items that are in that menu on the right uh, for your exhibits. Now, if you just wanna create like a regular old page, again, you wanna make sure you have that simple pages plugin. Uh, you can access it by clicking simple pages over here on the left. And right now there's only one page, the about page, which I guess is the default page they set up for you. So I'm just gonna click edit on it. And so it has some information already inputted. If I take a look at the page by clicking view public page, it'll show me the page here. So it's just the basic page with some content. And so in order to change that content, all I would need to do is just type in here you can also use the HTML editor that they have, and that allows you to do your basic formatting.
And if you have other pages, um, you can choose a parent page. So if you want like a drop down menu, uh, that's how you would do that. So I'm going to go back to simple pages and just leave. And so in order to create a new page, you would just click add a page and then just enter in this information here. So maybe I want to have like a resources page. I could type resources, resources. Okay. And then I can do save changes. Now, if I go back to resources, I actually need to make sure that I check off this publish this page box because then it'll make it publicly available to anyone who sees this website. By default, it seems like Omeka um, makes those pages and things private. Now, if I go back to my site, now resources appears at the top of the screen here. And if I don't like the way that these items are arranged, um, I can go ahead and change them by going to Appearance, Navigation, and just dragging and moving them around. So maybe I want it to be set up a little bit like this. So now it's rearranged uh, the navigation in the way that I like. And so this is just scratching the surface of, of what's possible with Omeka. Like I said, I really think this tool could be utilized for family collections. Um, and you can choose whether or not you want this website to be public or private. So um, this could be a really great way to, to present those items in an accessible and easy to understand way. All right, that is it. And that is it for this season as well. Um, if you like what you saw, if you learned something good, make sure to give me a like, give me some comments, and make sure to subscribe to my channel. Um, with this being the end of the season, guys, feel free to reach out to me um, and let me know what you might want to see in the next season. Um, and also, definitely make sure to check out the survey below and give me your opinion. Let me know what topics you want me to talk about next time. Um, and if there's anything that you want me to change in general, I really want to make sure that this series is useful for you guys going forward. All of that being said, thank you so much for checking out my channel and I hope to see you next time.